No one was to act on any orders, even from the president, unless Milley, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, was personally involved. Looks like General Milley's in charge now. Take a listen to what CNN says about the book that's coming out, and General Milley has not denied it, and there's conversations. Let's go. According to Woodward and Costa, on January 8th, Milley is deeply shaken from the assault on the Capitol on the 6th. He be- All right, so if he's deeply shaken because Trump's upset about the election, does that mean he just takes over? The most confusing part about this is the guy's taking over in case Trump makes a strike. However, there was never any alleged strike attempted. So now it just looks like he took power that wasn't his. Effectively, this was done by anybody else in the military. It's treason. Milley believes that Trump is in serious mental decline. He also has been talking back channel to the Chinese. He is aware from intelligence that the Chinese are on edge because of January 6th and because of Trump's behavior. So he's trying to reassure them behind the scenes. And Milley tells his senior staff, quote, you never know what a president's trigger point is. Against this backdrop, same day, January 8th, Milley gets a call from Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi. So now you got Nancy Pelosi, third in line, right? Calling this general. Now, how much of this is true? I don't know, because it seems like it's got to be fiction. That Nancy Pelosi's calling the general. The general's calling the Chinese general. They will let you know before there could be a strike, but there was never any strike called. And Trump's not upset with the Chinese at this point. He was upset with the results of, of you know what, can't say because YouTube will demonetize everything. I don't get it. I'm still trying to understand if this is like some 3D underwater super duper hippo chess I'm not getting. Transcript of the call. Pelosi has the same cur- concerns that Milley does. The phone call is dramatic. It is blunt. And Pelosi wants Milley to reassure her that the nuclear weapons are safe. And this is the exchange. Pelosi, who knows what he might do? He's crazy. You know he's crazy. He's been crazy for a long time. So don't say you don't know what his state of mind is. He's crazy. And what he did yesterday, meaning actually two days ago, January 6th, is further evidence of his craziness. Well, Nancy Pelosi has got a lot of room to talk here about the crazy. What I'm trying to drill down to is, does this general, where does this stop? We get another president, another set of generals. This guy overstepped his bounds, clearly, if this is true. General Milley says, Madam Speaker, I agree with you on everything. Uh, Milley reassures Pelosi on the call, but when he gets off, he thinks to himself, she's right, and he decides to take this extraordinary action. Well, the Speaker doesn't like Trump, right? We know that off the table. Nancy Pelosi doesn't like Trump. So they're going to say it's crazy, whatever. But there's been no allegations about pushing a button. But the guy thinks because he's upset about January 6th that he may push a button. This is getting very... Sir, and he's seeing this intelligence and actually having a back channel. That's extraordinary. Back channel with his counterpart in China saying, calm down. Everything will be okay. And he decides to call this extraordinary meeting. Take us inside. Right. And, and by the way, according to Woodward and Costa... Milley never tells the president about these back channel calls. So he calls an extraordinary meeting. So now we got a general calling basically a head of state of sorts in China, right? Another general and saying, we'll get to that point. If we're going to do some, we'll let you know in advance. It's hard to believe any of this is true. And if it is, this guy should be court martialed. Now, if it's true, that's the question. What do you guys think? Are they just going to push it aside because they don't like Trump? Of the National Military Command Center, the Pentagon War Room, he brings the generals in and the officials, according to Woodward and Costa. Just remember, he is not technically in the chain of command. He is an advisor to the president. uh, And he tells the generals and the officials who run the war room, no matter who calls you, you you got to let me know. Here's what he says. Quote, if you get calls, no matter who they're from, there's a process here. Well, I'd hope they followed the process. That's the point of a process, right? So he's reiterating, follow the process. 
But there's been no allegations that Trump was going to do what he is trying to prevent. That's the part about this. Even in the book, and Bernstein and the other guy don't like Trump. We know that. There's a procedure. No matter what you're to told, you do the procedure, you do the process, and I'm part of the process. Um, look, Milley may be criticized by some for overstepping his, his authority. Oh, yeah, he overstepped his authority. CNN's admitting that. But because it's Trump, are they, is it going to go ahead and ride? And this guy going to become a hero to Nancy Pelosi? Because this is dangerous ground, right? I know there's been a lot of allegations about Trump doing this and the military, but none of it's happened. None of it's, no one said and came out, yes, he tried to do it and we stopped it. It just becomes crazy land all of a sudden. But according to Woodward and Costa, he felt that he couldn't trust Trump and that we were in such a dangerous time of risk that he had to take all necessary precautions. He actually had an expression for it. He called it uh, the absolute darkest moment of theoretical possibility, what Trump might do.